Okay, everyone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at master detail reports. So now remember, master detail forms were where you had a one master record, for example, the lecturer, who was advising one or more students or zero or more students. Remember, it was an optional relationship. So we're going to take that same thing, that advisor form that we created, we're going to duplicate that kind of functionality on the, um, sorry, it was an alarm, on the, um, the uh, report. So we're going to do an advisor report. So I'm going to create a new report now. And again, I'm going to use the report wizard and I click next. Let's do the web and paper layout. So you can see the differences in the layouts. And we are now either going to use a group left or group above. So for now, we're going to use our group left and we're going to make it, we're going to call it our advisor report. So I click next. It's going to be based on a query. I click next. And I'm going to use the query builder. I know how fond you guys are using are of using the query builder. So if you remember, faculty in our case means the lecturer. So if I click on faculty, I say include. There it is, my faculty ID, the last name, and the first name of the lecturer, the phone, the rank, the supervisor, the pen. And then I'm going to select um, the uh, student table. And if you see here, it actually shows you that there is a relationship between faculty and students. Remember, this is a one to many relationship. FID in the student table is actually a foreign key that links to the FID in the faculty table. So now it's very important when I'm not going to select everything. So I'm just going to select the faculty's ID, the last name, the first name, and let's say the rank. Okay, it's very important to choose the primary key in the master table, in this case, the faculty table. Then I'm going to select the student ID, the last name, the first name, the phone, the classification, the date of birth, and very important, you must select the foreign key. In this case, it's FID in the student table. You click OK. And there it generates the query for you. What's very important is, do you see it saying where the student.fid, which is the foreign key in the student table, is equal to faculty.fid, which is the faculty uh, primary key in the faculty table. So what is it doing here? It's actually doing an equi join. Okay, very important. You must have this. So if I click next, you will see it's showing me all the attributes that I've asked for. So there's the faculty attributes, FID, last name, first name, rank. And there's all the student ones, including the foreign key FID from the student table. Now be very careful. Look at what this one says. Select the fields that you would like to designate as group fields to group by unique values. This is a different screen compared to when we did our basic report. Okay, our basic report said, which ones do you want to display? Now we have a new screen that says, select the fields that you would like to designate as group fields. Which are your group fields? It's the attributes from your master table, the faculty table, right? Do you see that? Now I click next. Look at it now. Select the fields that you would like to display. Now, this is the normal screen that you would have gotten in a basic report. Do you see by default, the master fields are already being displayed. So I am going to display the detail fields, the fields from the student table. Do you see I'm leaving out the faculty ID from the student table? Why am I doing that? Because it's already being displayed as part of the master. So if I'm not going to display it, why did I include that field in my query? 
I did it so that it could do the equijoin. That link where it said where student.fid is equal to faculty.fid, if I hadn't included it, this report wouldn't work. But even though it's part of the query, I don't necessarily want to display it on my report. So I click next. Um, I'm not going to do any calculations. Feel free to play around with that. You can count the number of records per lecturer. You can sum if you had uh, prices, for example. If you click next, now I'm going to change my label. So this is my faculty ID, my surname, my name, the rank. There I have my student ID. I have the student name. I have the student surname. I have the student phone. I have the student classification. And I have the student's birth date. Right. I click next. Again, I'm just going to use the predefined template. I'm going to stick with beige because it matches the Northwoods logo. I click next and I click finish. And look at what happens here. Okay. So what am I seeing here? I am seeing the record of the lecturer on the left. And do you see I'm seeing the detail of the students that that lecturer is advising on the right. And do you see it's highlighting the groups? What I can do is I can actually split it up a little bit. Do you see it's creating gaps in between each of the groups? It just makes it a little bit easier to read, right? Um, if I go here to my uh, paper uh, layout, what I can also do is maybe I could just reduce Never mind. Let's rather not mess with it. Like I said, it can be it can start getting very complicated when you're trying. There we go. And I'm trying to But anyway, not important. So do you see there it's actually changing it right now let's say um, I had to move one of these students right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log on to SQL plus And the reason I'm doing that is, let's say I think, you know what, Teresa marks this lecture. Three students is too much for her. I want to move this student, John Marsh, right? MA100. I want to move him to lecturer ID 5. Now, it's not showing lecturer ID 5 because that lecturer has no students that they're advising at the moment. So I want to move one of these lecturers from Teresa Marks to lecturer ID 5, which has no students. Once again, we just need to wait for the virtual machine. It seems very slow today. Okay, so here, if I go and I say update student set F ID to five, where S ID is equal to M A one hundred. So what am I doing? I am moving. The student, John Marsh, whose SID is MA100, I am setting his FID, which is the foreign key in the student table, to 5, where before it was 1.
I commit it. If I go back and I say, run the paper layout, look at what happens. Do you see here that Teresa Marks now lost John Marsh as a student and now James Seely has John Marsh as a student? Okay, so this report, when I reran it, it updated to the newest data in my database. Okay, so this is my group left version. Now, I'm just going to save this. So here, um, this is my advisor report, and it's the group left version. And remember, I save it as a reports binary file. So I save that. There I can see advisor report group left. Now, I'm going to save this again. But this time, I'm going to... Um, save as, and I'm going to actually do this as a group above, just to show you the difference. Now, I have it here, but just because I've changed the name doesn't mean it's changed the layout. How do I change the layout for this report? Once again, if I right click and bring up the report wizard, do you see I'm able to edit everything using my report wizard? And this time, I'm just going to change the style to group above, just so that you can see the difference between the two layouts. If I click Finish, do you see there now what's happening? I have my master information above the detail information. Do you see that? So all it's doing is it's changing it a little. It's just changing the layout. The data itself is still the same, but the layout is a little different. So for example, if I select that data there, I'm gonna change it to black, just to make it a little bit easier to read versus the actual title of the column. Okay, so do you see there now I can see, okay, Faculty ID is one, surname marks, name Teresa, rank associate, and she's advising these two students. Do you see that? Okay, so then I can just very quickly just insert the logo just to make it look a little bit better and to match my other reports. Okay, so there's the Northwoods logo. There, it, again, it's a little bit bigger than previous, so I just switch there. I can edit my margin and just reduce the printable area for the data. And I do that. And then this one, I can just make it bigger again, just to match um, my previous report. Okay, right, and there's my report. Okay, and that's it for a basic master detail report. Okay, that's all you really need to know about the master detail reports. In the next video tutorial, we're gonna discuss how do you parameterize a report? Because this, even though it's a master detail report, it's still what's called a list. Right, and lists are not that useful to managers. I mean, if I have five lecturers now and whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six students, this is a one pager. But what if I have a thousand lecturers and I have 30,000 students? If I have to generate this report with that kind of data underneath that report, what is going to happen? I'm going to have a a 500 page document that I'm going to give to my manager and my manager is going to ask me what the heck am I supposed to do with this now? So for the next video lesson we're going to look at how do I go about actually um, parameterizing this report just so that I could limit it in some or other way, okay? It depends on the report that you're going to do. Okay, so we'll see you next lesson.